Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about polymyalgia rheumatica or PMR. So what is polymyalgia rheumatica? Polymyalgia rheumatica is a pain and stiffness of proximal extremities in the absence of muscle weakness. So those are the key elements of polymyalgia rheumatica. Pain and stiffness of proximal extremities, we'll talk about what those proximal extremities are in a bit, with no muscle weakness. And PMR will respond to low-dose corticosteroids. Those are the main ingredients of polymyalgia rheumatica. We'll get into more specifics on how we make the exact diagnosis. Polymyalgia rheumatica falls within what we call diffuse soft tissue rheumatism. And it's related to a condition known as giant cell arteritis or temporal arteritis. And this involves uh, jaw claudication, can cause blindness in individuals, and it usually affects about 5 to 30 percent of PMR patients, which means that about 5 to 30 percent of PMR patients go on to develop temporal arteritis or giant cell arteritis. The epidemiology of PMR is generally older individuals, so greater than the age of 50, about 0 0.05 percent new cases occur per year and about uh, females outnumber males by about two to one so there are two times more um, females with PMR than males with PMR. What are some of the signs and symptoms of polymyalgia rheumatica? There are constitutional symptoms involved. There is generally can be a low-grade fever, can be weight loss, and can have malaise, so fatigue. They can also have pain and stiffness of proximal muscles symmetrically. So I talked about this before, pain and stiffness of the proximal extremities or proximal muscles, and it is symmetrical. Generally, it is the neck, shoulders, and the hips. So those are the areas that are key for polymyeldramatica. Pain and stiffness of the neck and usually symmetrical on uh, both sides for shoulders and hips. So these are the areas where PMR affects. Now, there, we also get what is called gelling. So gelling is after decreased activity, we have increased stiffness. So if you're sitting for a while, if a patient's sitting for a while and they try to get up their they have some stiffness that may take time to uh, go away. Now, there's also muscle tenderness in these areas, but again, there's no weakness or atrophy of the muscles. That is, again, key to making the diagnosis of PMR. And when we look at blood uh, work, there's actually some associated blood abnormalities with polymyodramatica. One is that the patients are typically anemic, and another one is that they usually have elevated platelet counts, elevated ESR, so greater than 50, and an elevated CRP. So if we suspect polymyodramatica, how do we actually make the diagnosis? Well, there isn't exact established diagnostic criteria for polymyodramatica, but some of the criteria at least involves the following. One, the first criteria is that the age of onset of the polymyodramatica symptoms is at least 50 years old. The second criteria is proximally and bilaterally distributed aching and morning stiffness lasting at least 30 minutes or more. Some other diagnostic criteria say at least 45 minutes, some say at least 60 minutes, but we can go with at least 30 minutes, persisting for at least two weeks. The stiffness should involve at least two of those three areas we mentioned before, neck or torso, shoulders or proximal region of the arms, hips or proximal aspects of the thighs. So again, either the neck, the shoulders, or the hips, and we need at least two of those areas. The third criteria is an erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR greater than 40 per hour. So we talked, we mentioned greater than 50. Some diagnostic criteria say greater than 50. This diagnostic um, criteria says at least 40. So at least 40 to 50. And, and also an in key important point is that there's a rapid resolution of symptoms with low-dose corticosteroids. So this is, again, 
very important to make the diagnosis of PMR. So if there's no response to glucocorticoids, or glucocorticoids, we have to think of another diagnosis. So once we've made the diagnosis of PMR, how do we actually treat it? Treatment involves the goal of relief of symptoms. And we use corticosteroids like we mentioned before. We use prednisone and we use 15 to 20 milligrams PO once a day. And response is key to diagnosis. So patient response to prednisone is key to diagnosis. If they don't respond to prednisone, we have to think about other diagnoses. Once the patient has responded and they're on prednisone, we want to slowly taper the prednisone over a period of one year. The course of PMR can generally be anywhere from six months to five years. It can be years in duration, but it can be as short as six months. And because patients with PMR have an increased likelihood of getting temporal arteritis, we want to observe for signs of temporal arteritis. We want to observe for any sudden um, vision loss, any jaw claudication, things like that to make sure we don't miss temporal arteritis as well with these patients. Again, the treatment for temporal arteritis is the same. We use high dose steroids in these individuals. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a quick lesson on polymyalgia rheumatica. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.